Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about dates and why you should have a master calendar in your applications. Okay, to start the explanation, I will go first to Excel and show you that actually dates are numbers. So if I put here today, uh, today is the 22nd of May 2024, I can convert this to number and you will see 45,434. And the reason for this number is because this is the number of days since the 1st of January 1900. Okay, uh, we can do math operations with that. So adding like plus one, plus two, whatever, or do the opposite. So I can also put here 45,000 and convert this number into a date. Same thing. And to explain that and some date functions and click, I will first create a table with some numbers like this, just iterating everything. So one plus one plus one with 1000 rows. And then I'm going to add 45,000 to each one of these lines and convert these values uh, into uh, dates. Okay, so let's see how to do that. So first I'm going to create here a temp table, load uh, row number, which is the function to bring the number of that row as num date, like this and auto-generate 1,000 rows. Now load everything. Let's create a table to visualize what we are actually creating. So first dimension, num date. We have here number one, two, three. Now let's add 45,000 to, to each one of these values. There we go. And now we're going to start converting these numbers into dates. Okay. So for that, I will create a separate table called table and use the previous one as the reference. Okay. So I'll put here num date, which is the field that we already have. Now date using the num date uh, field as date. But just to make it clear, this is the name of the field and this is a function. Okay, so we are passing here the date function using the, the num date field as the reference. And we can also do the same thing like month. So I'll use here the month function as month. So this again is the name of the column. And now let me use the reference, which is the resident table of the temp table. And we need to drop it like this. Okay, so going back to our dashboard, we can now add the date column and also the month column. Notice that here we have month first slash date uh, day and year, right? And the reason for that is because when we are using here the date function, it's also using what we define here in the variables. So this variable here is what is actually uh, defining the standard. If I change here today, uh, month and year like that, I can refresh everything, reload the data, go back. And here in my chart, I have day, month and year. Okay, so make sure that you have everything set up correctly in your case, and let's go to the next step. Well, we can also use here year, okay, just to make sure that we at least cover the main functions. Okay, now let me just add it here again. All right. But sometimes we want to do the opposite, which is to convert something that we have in a table into a date. I have here one example. So we'll see how to convert a text like this into a date, right? So if I load this and we look at the, in a table format, let me create here a new sheet. Okay. 
we now have everything here but you notice that this is just a text okay now in this case we need to use the date hash function to convert this since we already know the format so this is three digits for month four digits for year we can go back here and i will create now a new field using this as, as the reference using the date hash function so date hash we first use the name of the field and then we need to use the for the current format so in this case it is 3m and 4y as month okay now let's go back and reload everything and add here the field notice that now it is on the right side of the field because it already understand that this is a date this means that if we put here on the bar chart first the month year field and the value and in a separate chart we put basically the same thing but now using the month field which is formatted as date and the same thing so the same measure notice that now this one here starts actually from the oldest to the most recent and we can also create dates here like since we don't have the number of the day it will assume the first day of the month but we could use something like i will just copy and paste the same thing i will rename this to new month year and here we'll have the date we already have everything here but we'll use now the date function and everything here inside will be interpreted by the date function okay so click here load data it will lose some references because we renamed the column no problem so put it back here new month year it's back and now date as i said since it doesn't know the day it will assume the first day but the months are correct and the years are correct too now let's go to our next step which is to create a master calendar since we have here the date field we'll use it to create the master calendar and we won't need this and this we just need the date field to start that okay uh, first let me just put this here go back to the script i have already removed what we don't need which is the month year and the other one that we had created before we just need now this date field okay in this table and let me show you what we're going to do step by step first let me bring up the master calendar part so the first step is to create a table with the mean date and max date right so basically a very small table with two columns one with the minimum value which in this case here would be uh, this one and the maximum value okay and we're going to store these values in two variables v min data and v max data actually this was supposed to be date but uh, it's just a typo using the pick function we can do that okay and here we're going to iterate a new table until uh, using first uh, the mean date until it reaches the max date okay so we're going to iterate that row by row using the first date here as the reference and going day by day until it reaches the maximum value basically it's just a table with all the possible dates so first let me just show you that how it works i will first comment this preceding load part so that you can actually see what the date field will be i will now click in load data something happened so field a not found and this is because uh, we didn't rename everything here so just correcting it now loading it again i can remove these two columns and you'll see that we now have a bunch of days that are not uh, related to anything else but they are there they exist right this is because we have here this separate table with the date field and these two are connected since they have the same name so we have in this table date six rows but in the master calendar we have 
671 rows. And now we can create the year, month, and all the other fields in the master calendar table. So using preceding load here, we are doing that. Uh, we are now creating the year, the quarter using sale and month, month and day. Okay, now I can click here again. Go back to the chart and we can even create here a chart with the date field. Change the sorting. And we'll have all days from the year starting with the minimum day and going until the maximum day. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you like it. I will leave this section here in the comment section. Just make sure you replace here the name of the table and make sure that this date field is the same of your other table. Consider subscribing if you like the content and also watch the other tips here that I have in the channel. Hit the like button and I see you soon in the next video.